Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can add your SSH key and get going so we can actually push an actual project up to our GitLab. Okay, so let's head to our project, which you just had as test. And as you can see, we won't be able to actually do anything with this until we add our SSH key. So let's just click this add SSH key to our profile. And in here, you could see we just have a way to paste in a title and a key. Now you're gonna need a key for each computer you want to use this uh, system on. And that's the same for any of these Bitbucket or GitHub. Uh, and what we can do is generate an SSH key if you need one. If you don't need one and you already have one, then feel free to just paste in the key here if you know exactly what that looks like. But let's also open this up in a new tab. And so as you can see, we have some instructions here. Basically, it's saying that before you create a new one, let's go ahead and just check to see if we have a key here. So we can do that simply by typing in this command here. So let's head to our terminal and I'm just going to have a new tab and type in this command. And as you can see here, this is my public key here. Now, I had mine blurred out so you can actually see it, but what you'll see is a long, long string here full of all sorts of different characters. Now, if you don't see that, we'll wanna go ahead and create one. Let's go ahead and if you do see your key, you can come back and paste it in here now and you'll see this long string in here and we can save it with a title and we can just say, you know, desktop, this is my desktop computer. Okay, and we can click add key. So we can see I have this key here. But let's go through the process of actually creating one. I'm gonna select yes, I'm sure. And let's scroll down here. And you'll see we can generate one with this command here, with this SSH key gen, okay? So let's head back to our terminal and it's SSH hyphen key gen space hyphen T space RSA space hyphen capital C, and then our email address. Let's go ahead and just say scott at leveluptuts.com. Okay, now we can hit enter. And you can see it's going to create a new key in this directory. And you can just hit enter. It's asking if I want to overwrite. I can just say sure and enter a passphrase. I'm not going to use a passphrase, so I can just hit enter twice. And you'll notice our key's been created. Now that we have this, we can run our cat tilde forward slash dot SSH forward slash ID underscore RSA dot pub once more. And this is just going to output the new key that we have. Now I have mine obfuscated so you can't see it, but I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to paste it into my SSH key. Again, you won't be able to see this, but I can click add key now. And we should now have our key in here if you refresh your project, you'll notice this little warning has gone away. You can see we have this empty project. So just like any sort of other Git system, we could clone this repo, change it, and then push it up, or we can take an existing folder already, initialize it for Git, and remote add this origin. So I'm going to do that one. Let's head to my terminal. I'm gonna change directly into sites. I'm gonna just go ahead in this React Native folder. Let's go into my movie DB. I'm working on a huge React Native series right now, so this might be a nice time to talk about that. If you wanna support the creation of these free tutorials, uh, check out store.leveluptutorials.com, and coming this month as in April is going to be an awesome, really super large React Native series. So from inside of our projects directory, we can just do git init. We now have a new git repository. I can add in a new origin. You can see git remote add origin. And let's go ahead and just do git add dot. I don't have an ignore file here, so this is gonna push up everything. And we can just do git commit initial commit forgot the hyphen M, we need hyphen M. Okay, git commit, initial commit. And let's do git push origin master. Let's just hit yes to this. And now our repo is going up. As you can see, it's being pushed and we're almost done. There we go. So let's head back 
And so this is the first commit of a project. When I refresh this, you'll see that we now have what an interface that is sort of like what we would see with GitHub. We have our project, you can start, you can fork it, you can copy the, the Git path here, we can add notifications for it. But more importantly, we have an initial commit by me right here. Uh, and because this doesn't have a readme yet, we're not seeing any sort of readme. But now that we have our project here, let's go ahead and head over to files. And you'll be able to see our default file view where we can see all sorts of cool stuff like our index.android.js. And in here, not only can we view this file, but I mean, you could edit it if you want. You could click edit and edit this directly in this text editor if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but it's definitely a possibility. And you'll see that I'm browsing within this commit. You can click browse files here and see all of the files from that commit itself. You can see that by this drop down right here. We have this commit number. So if you just simply were to come here, files, you could say, I want to view the master branch, and that's obviously the latest state of the master branch, or any other branches that you possibly have in here. So you could swap by branches and always sort of see the files. You can download them right here. You can download them as a tar.gz, whatever you want. But as you can see, this is a really nice interface, and it's not out of place in anything that you're used to right? For being a totally open source project, it looks and functions really, really nice. So we can now see, let's click commits, and you can now see the commit. It was done by me, when it was done, by who, where from, and when. You can even browse the files. You can even click branches to see the various branches of our projects. We can tag specific points in the history as being important. You could think of like a tag as like a larger commit. It's not necessarily like committing files, uh, but it's like a commit message. In fact, that it lets you know what's sort of going on. So a tag is a good way to say like, this is major version change for whatever this or breaking changes at this point. Now let's select graphs, and as you can see, we can see commit graphs. We can see commits by different people, uh, contributors. We can see commits per day. We can get a lot of information. Uh, what sort of languages? Uh, and we have these nice user experience all things. For instance, this React Native project has a lot of Objective-C, it has a lot of JavaScript, has 9% uh, Java because this is iOS, Android, and React Native. So that's pretty much it. Here is our project. Here is the project's page. And once we have a readme, uh, this is going to be looking really super nice. Cool. So we now have a project. We've pushed it up. Uh, and I have access to this, right? But I'm the only one with an account. So in the next video, we're going to actually take a look at some user management where we can have multiple users on this. Now in the next video, I'm going to take a look at user management. So what we can do is create a new user and get that user the permissions that they need to be able to clone and check out this uh, repository as need be. And they can only do the sort of things that you would want them to be able to do. So we're going to be taking a look at user roles, permissions, and and sort of creating new users in the next video. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you'd like to get the rest of these videos before they're available on YouTube, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and purchase this series to support. You can download all of the videos in HD, or you can become a Level Up Pro and stream them right now. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.